Hi there, this is Waves here. In this video, I will show you how to play with strings in Java. I am using IntelliJ idea over here. The first step would be to create a string. Let's call it string s1 and make it empty. Notice that I have just added double quotes here and there is nothing inside it. If I try printing this out, but you won't be able to see it because there is nothing in it. Now what about the length of this string? We can find that easily by saying s1.length, which it prints as 0. Now what if I make s1 as null? We immediately get an error, which is one of the most famous errors you will ever encounter in Java. It says java.lang.null pointer exception. It simply means a value was null and you tried to call a method on that value. So it even shows you the line number. If you click on this, it takes you to line number four, where it is quite obvious that S1 must be null. So you cannot call any methods on this S1 if it is null. We can use an if condition and check if S1 is null or not. I can say if S1 not equals to null, then print the value of its length. Otherwise, don't do it. So let's go and run this code. And this time we don't see an error, but we don't see an output either. We can use an else statement as well, and we can say s out. In this case, you have a null string. So in our case, right now, we will get the message that says you have a null string. So this is how you would work with null and empty strings. Now let's take a look at something more concrete. This time I will say s1 is hello from vips. Now we can print the length of this, which happens to be 15. Now let's try some concatenation. I'm going to remove this vips part here. Just keep hello from in one of the strings. I'll create s2 and this will have the word vips. Now I can add both of them and that is going to give me a new string s3 where I can say s1 plus s2. Now unlike integers where they get actually added here, the two phrases are merged together and that is stored in S3. So now I can print S3 and you will see what happens. Notice that it says hello from webs and there is no space between the last two words because it joins them as it is without being smart about it. So there are two choices. You can add a space here or you can add a space here and remove the space from there. Or an even better approach is to add the space right in between S1 and S2. Let me show you what I mean. Add the space as a separate string and add a plus sign here. So now there are three strings that we are linking together. S1 which says hello from, this space here which is also a string and the S2 over here which says vives. Now if you run this you will see the same output except that you will have a space between from and vives. So this is how you can use concatenation. Now there was another way of doing this whole thing. We can just remove the plus sign and we can say s1.concat and s2 inside the parentheses. This means take the string s1, whatever it has and merge that with whatever s2 has and give me the result and let s3 point to that result. So let's run the code here and find out what it does. So there's hello from vives again with the space problem and you can fix it the same way that I discussed earlier. Now let's try to understand how we can compare strings and the equality property. So if I say s out and if I say s1 equals equals s2, this is going to give me true because s1 and s2 point to the same piece of text which says hello. However, if I change s1 equals equals s4 and if I run the program now, you will notice that it says false and that is because this text is stored in the heap memory area whereas this text is stored in the stack memory area. However, we would like to compare the contents of the two string instead of basing our preferences on who is pointing where and who is stored where. Now the way we do that in Java is using the dot equals method. I can say dot equals here and pass s4 inside the bracket and this is going to give me true when I run it because the equals method 
compares the contents of the string regardless of where they are in memory. So whenever you're comparing strings in Java, use the equals method instead of the equals equals symbol. In fact, go to Google and type string equals versus the symbol equals equals and you will see a lot of posts that talk about that in detail. Now we can compare the other one which is S3 and this is going to give us false because the contents of the two string are different. Now they are different because there is a capital letter E here and a small letter E here. If we want to ignore such things, we can use the equals ignore case method here which doesn't consider whether they are capital or small and gives us true here in the output as you notice. Now let's take a look at the part called escape sequences or escape characters in Java and try to understand. So currently my output prints hello. Now what if I wanted hello over here in double quotes. Now to do that of course I will have to add double quotes here inside the expression. Now notice what happens when I add double quotes inside. Java gives me an error and the reason is simple. The compiler thinks this is the start of a string, this is the end of the string. This is the start and this is the end and what is this hello in between and is not able to figure out. You need to tell the compiler that look this double quote is a part of the text that I want to show on the screen and don't process it. To do that you use a backslash character here. Same way you need to tell this double quote as well to the compiler so you put a backslash over there as well. Now when you click run at the top and you run the program, you will notice that we have double quotes around our hello text. So these backslash base characters are called special characters or escape sequences. The same way you can have single quotes around the backslash that will print single quotes. You can have something called slash n. Let me show you that. You just write slash n here, slash n here, which stands for new line. If you run the code, you will notice that the slash n first gives you a new line and after that it prints the word hello and after that it adds another new line. Now this is an addition to the print ln's new line that is added at the end which is why there are two new lines over here if you notice. The same way you can have a slash t here to indicate that you want to add a tab in the output screen. Take a look at that. We have our tab here and then the hello text appears. Now strings is a huge topic and there are still several methods that I would like to discuss. But since the video is already quite long, I will stop right here. In the next video, I will continue our games with the string class. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Have a nice day.